Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Joyce Brown. I'm the president of the Fashion Institute of Technology, and I am just delighted to be able to announce FIT's new Master of Fine Arts program in fashion design. It's a two-year program, and it is part of FIT's School of Graduate Studies, and it's actually the first MFA in fashion design within the whole State University of New York system. So with me today is Jonathan Kyle Farmer. He's a professor and chair of this innovative program. So welcome. Welcome to you, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Brown. Oh, I'm just delighted that we have an opportunity to talk about oh, the program. Yes. So tell me now, how is FIT's MFA program different from other programs in, in the field? And maybe a little bit about the vision that went into creating it. So I think the main difference is, is that of pace. Um, the speed in which industry works is often reflected in other MFA programs in terms of the amount of um, designing that's expected of students and, and the, so the deliveries, uh, the, it reflects industry. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do was slow that right down and give the students time and space to be able to analyze their own work and reflect on that and create some distance from their own work to be able to look at it and be able to put something more uh, meaningful and sort of soulful back out into the industry. Instead of just producing more clothes, they're producing something with, right. with soul. Um, the, the, um, the vision was actually quite simple, actually. When I got the position, I was like, wow, I'm at FIT, <laughs> the Fashion Institute of Technology. So I really looked at that and looked at the heritage and looked at what fashion and technology was, what it is, and what it could be and uh, really um, embodied that within the development of the curriculum and, 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 and really encouraging the students to think about what fashion and technology can do in hand in hand as we move forward. Yeah, yeah. well, it's interesting. I mean, there's so much happening today that, that really does uh, need to propel us, I think, to, to another place almost. So how, how do the students go about executing the vision. So, yeah, I mean, so the, the designing of the curriculum, uh, it was based on five core words, which is idea, play, focus, edit, and conclude. And the idea is their application. So the idea is that the students have an idea, something that has happened to them in their life, in their careers, uh, where they've thought about something they want to do with fashion to change it, something they want to do to move it forward. So they apply with a proposal. And that proposal is what they want to do for their thesis. So they move into their thesis space, which is thesis play, semester one, where they're given the luxury of 15 weeks to play. Now, that doesn't mean they just get to skip Hang around out. and dance. <laughs> it means that they define rules of their game. Uh, what is it that they're trying to do? And maybe play with things that they've never done before, technologies, have conversations with people that may not be within their fields, and hopefully stumble on those moments of eureka. And yeah. they go, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, and that's probably likely, more likely today with the technology and Hopefully, all the new ways of yeah. experimenting. Yeah, I call them accidental innovations. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they're stumbling upon these things that you weren't expecting. And that means then they can focus on those in semester two where they go into thesis focus. And that's the phase where we start introducing them to industry mentors. And that doesn't necessarily just mean fashion design mentors, but they may be paired with scientists, psychologists, uh, people that are experts in coding. So how do those so things then... It's a thought process, yeah. how you make it evolve. And how do those things influence clothing eventually? Because the output will still be a shirt, but it's how we get to that shirt, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then we go into the editing phase, where we edit the collection, pretty self-explanatory, and then we conclude the project, where the students will produce a 12 look collection, or equivalent, and it's very dependent on the individual thesis for the student. So mm. one student may produce a 12 look collection that's worthy of runway, but somebody else may de decide that they want to develop this brand new idea that they've had about a, a sock. So it could be product driven as well as sock. ready to wear. <laughs> the most beautiful sock. <laughs> Na naturally, a, of course. A magical <laughs> sock. Um, I actually do hope I get that sock, Steve. <laughs> I use it as an example all the time. Um, but the, and then, the, then, of course, the most important thing is how the work lives beyond the classroom. So we have four external ways in which the students sort of show the world their work. The first is a thesis defense, which again is unusual in fashion design programs mm. where they defend their thesis um, in, pr in front of an audience and an industry panel. They will do an exhibition and portfolio viewing, but that's a private viewing that's for investors, headhunters and so on. Mm. We will be doing a runway show of some kind because we are trying to change Hard even that. Sucks, yes. <laughs> and that's what makes it exciting, correct? Um, and of course, what we want to do then is archive that progression, the evolution of, um, 
the individual in some kind of book. So that's the fourth deliverable. Mm, mm. So, so I see the vision. How, what are some of the specific courses students might take or, and the ways in which, I mean, you mentioned industry, and of course it's a big hallmark in our, in our undergraduate program, yeah. but how do they interact with industry at this so, level? Um, industry is core to the, um, you know, they, they go one in hand in hand, as you said, you can't have one without the other. But my hope is that we can not just have industry come in and, and assist in the students in helping their vision come true, but ho also putting students out back into the industry that mm. can also inform the industry and help educate that and move that. Because, you know, right. lots of people talk about synergy. stuff a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So in terms of other courses that are non-thesis, uh, we have a course called The Fashion Activist which is basically about um, providing students with facts about how things come to be. So instead of just being in the studio drawing a pretty dress and saying I want it red, right. instead the students have to know where that red comes from, how it's produced, what the impact on the environment is. So you know the, the ethics and sustainable thinking around choices. Interesting, yeah. uh, another one is called Craftology and that's a particular uh, favorite of mine which looks at craft and technology is the same just through the lens of time and when that changes and shifts based on uh, a trajectory of your own um, self and work. So I get the students to think of themselves as future historians and to think uh, an example, for example, is the Mary Quant miniskirt. You know, that now is just a miniskirt. But that miniskirt came to being because it was about politics and being powerful around dressing women. So getting the students to think about themselves as future historians, to look at themselves a hundred years from now and think about what is their work doing now to influence the world later. Yeah. And my particular favorite is design archaeology, which is a, a course that uses the FIT resources that we have, which is, you know, the museum, sure. the archive, the mater uh, flat materials library, and the, the, um, the, the library, of course, where you know, we have a resource that no other school has, so I designed the course with those things in mind. Mm, interesting. You know, it, it, it is so interesting to set it in a context. When you think about where we're going in the future, it, it, you know, we really are, of course, informed by what preceded. So that's, Absolutely. that's interesting. Yeah. So where do you envision recruiting students from? What sort of backgrounds? What are we looking for here? We are looking for a very diverse pool. We're looking for people that may have come from a formal fashion design uh, degree, uh, may have spent time in industry as fashion designers, but we're also looking for people from other creative industries. So there may be somebody from an architectural background or um, graphic design, or mm -hmm. they may be menswear, children's wear, women's wear, print, textile driven. Um, uh, we're looking for innovators. We're looking for inventors. And what's what's exciting about this is that it's a, the students have a, um, a designated studio where they will be in a space for two years with their cohort of 18 where they will have conversations that they would never have thought they'd have with the children's wear designers right. working in color theory next to an architect. I mean, the, yeah. the conversation is going to be so the rich. The environment so, will be yeah. part of the process. Absolutely. So I think the students, are, you know, all, like any program, the students make the program. Yeah. But the exciting thing is because of the way in which we are recruiting every year is going to be different to the one before it. Yeah. Well, it sounds wonderful, and I think it'll be a great opportunity for the students that do come here. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. If you'd like more information about FIT's MFA program in fashion design, or if you're interested in applying, I encourage you to visit our website at fitnyc.edu. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Dr. Brown.